Welcome back guys. Now let's discuss about restrictive lung diseases. Restrictive lung diseases. In short form we are going to call them as RLDs. So what is this restriction? Okay. In restrictive lung disease the main problem the restriction is for the air intake. So it is inspiratory problem in obstructive lung diseases mainly it's an expiratory problem. Here it's an inspiratory problem. So main problem is during inspiration. So less air goes in and less air comes out. Okay, it's mainly the inspiratory problem. In restrictive lung diseases, some important points which I want you to know. So, what about the forced vital capacity? What about FEV1 and FVC, FEV1 by FVC ratio? See, in a normal person, FVC is somewhere around 5 liters, right? In this person, in restrictive patient, he is not able to take enough air into the lungs. Okay, and he is not able to take enough air out of the lungs. Forced vital capacity is also going to be decreased. So, FVC decreases. And what about the FEV1? Less air is going in and less air is coming out. In the first second, forced expiratory volume in one second, the amount of air that comes out of the lung in one second is also going to be less. Because less air is going in and less air will come out. So, the amount of air that is coming out in one second is also going to be less. So, it also decreases. Now, what about the FEV1 by FEC ratio? Normal person, FEV1 by FEC ratio is going to be somewhere around 80% or even more than 80%. Now, here in this condition, the FEV1 by FEC ratio is going to be normal. Okay, like a normal person. Okay, because... Both FVC and FEV1, both FVC and FEV1 are decreasing in a same proportion. As they are decreasing in same proportion, the ratio is going to be normal. It is somewhere around 80%. This is what I want you to know. But in comparison, in contrast with the obstructive lung diseases, see this is RLD, restrictive lung disease. In obstructive lung diseases, what happened? Sir, the forced vital capacity is going to be normal. FEV1 is going to be reduced. So, FEV1 by FEC ratio is going to be reduced in obstructive lung disease. So, based on this, FEV1 by FEC, FEV1, uh, we can actually differentiate between whether it's a obstructive lung disease or restrictive lung disease. In obstructive lung disease, the main problem is with the expiration. In restrictive lung diseases, the main problem is with the inspiration. So, what are the causes of restrictive lung diseases? See, causes can be anatomical like kyphosis, scoliosis, where the lungs are being compressed, you cannot inflate the lungs properly that can lead to restrictive lung diseases. But mainly, it's the interstitial diseases within the lung. Some disease process within the lung is going to cause the restriction for the airflow. So, what are they? Interstitial lung disease. Okay, interstitial lung diseases. So, what are these interstitial lung diseases, sir? Which are going to cause the restriction within the lung? Examples include, there are certain systemic diseases. Okay, so which systemic diseases are going to cause this interstitial lung disease? Diseases like scleroderma. Okay, scleroderma. Next, rheumatoid arthritis. Good pasture syndrome. Okay, good pasture syndrome. Bregnitz granulomatosis. Okay, Bregnitz granulomatosis. And certain uh, diseases like sarcoidosis. Okay, granulometry, okay, granulomatous conditions like sarco uh, sarcoidosis can be seen. See, all these can lead to interstitial lung disease. So, if there is interstitial lung disease, that interstitial lung disease is going to cause the restrictive lung disease like pulmonary fibrosis. See, all these diseases like scleroderma, in the name itself it says the sclerosis, fibrosis is happening. In scleroderma, the lungs are also going to get fibrotic. So, such fibrotic lungs are 
not having enough compliance, the compliance of the fibrotic lungs is going to go down. So it is very much hard to expand the lungs. So it's an inspiration problem. In all these conditions, the main problem is the fibrosis. Now let me tell you, the most common cause of interstitial lung disease, the most common interstitial lung disease is not the systemic diseases, it's idiopathic. We don't know the reason, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Okay, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is the most common cause. And in other conditions, see all this in scleroderma, you know the causes. In all these conditions, also the same thing is happening. That can lead to restrictive lung diseases. And certain occupations, okay, can lead to the restrictive lung diseases or pulmonary fibrosis. What are they? Pneumoconiosis. Pneumoconiosis. Like coal workers pneumoconiosis. Okay, coal workers lung or silicosis, asbestosis, okay. So, these are all the pneumoconiosis which are occupational lung diseases. So, certain occupations are going to affect the lung leading to the pulmonary fibrosis and certain drugs, certain drugs are also going to cause the pulmonary fibrosis like ABC drugs, A, B, C. What are they? Amiodarone. Bleomycin, Busulfan, Parmustin, Cyclophosphamide, okay, Cyclophosphamide and Methotrexate, okay, Methotrexate. See, these are the drugs which can lead to pulmonary fibrosis, that is a restrictive lung disease. The next condition is hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Okay, hypersensitivity pneumonitis can also lead to restrictive lung diseases. So, these are certain interstitial lung diseases which can lead to restrictive lung diseases. Now, what I want you to know is, see, if a patient is having this interstitial lung disease, on chest x-ray, how it is going to be seen? How it is going to be seen? It is going to show something called as reticulonodular pattern or honeycombing appearance. The lungs, the lung fields are going to look like a honeycombing because of the interstitial fibrosis. Okay, honeycombing. Okay. Next. What else you should know? They will ask you some important points about the pneumoconiosis. First, let's begin with the coal workers disease. Okay, pneumoconiosis, the first pneumoconiosis that I am going to discuss is called as coal workers disease. Coal workers lung which is also called as anthracosis. What are the important points which you should know? This coal workers lung is going to be seen in which people? So those persons who are working in the coal mines. The coal mines. So they continuously inhale this coal particles. This coal particles are going to go into the lung. Which lobes are going to be affected? Mainly upper lobes. Mainly upper lobes are going to be affected in coal workers pneumoconiosis. Now, let's discuss about silicosis. This silicosis is going to be seen in the persons who are working in the foundries, who are doing the sandblasting. Okay, so sandblasting, foundries. Okay, who are working with quads, granite. So, these patients are going to have the silicosis. Okay, who are working in the mines. Now, some important points about the silicosis is, the silicosis, okay, the silica particles, whatever are getting deposited in the lung, it prevents the phagolysosomal fusion. Okay, phago, lysosomal fusion. So, that person who is having silicosis, the phagosome and lysosomal fusion within the macrophages is not going to be done, it is going to be affected. So, these patients are at a risk of getting certain infections, especially TB. So, silicosis patients are at a risk of getting mycobacterial TB infections and silicosis also increases the risk of bronchogenic carcinoma. 
bronchogenic carcinoma. Okay, so silicosis is also completed. The next disease which I want you to know is asbestosis. Before going to asbestosis, if you do the chest x-ray, chest x-ray, mainly the upper lobes will be affected. You will see axial calcifications. Axial calcifications are going to be seen in silicosis. That's the point which I want you to know. So in silicosis also upper lobes are affected. Okay, upper lobes are affected. So both in Kohlwerker's lung that is anthracosis as well as silicosis, it's the upper lobes are going to be affected. Axial calcifications are seen with the silicosis. Next disease is asbestosis. So it's the inhalation of the asbestos particles. Okay, asbestos fibers. Okay, inhalation. So this asbestosis is going to be seen in those persons who are mainly working in the ship industry, shipbuilding industry. Okay, shipbuilding, plumbing industry, roofing industry. So they, they, those occupations can lead to asbestosis. The main important point is these patients will have interstitial lung disease. Okay, interstitial lung disease is nothing but the pulmonary fibrosis, honeycombing pattern, reticular nodular, reticular nodular pattern is going to be seen on the X-ray. It's just a pulmonary fibrosis. His patients are going to have a specific type of cancer that is mesothelioma. Okay, mesothelioma that's the cancer of pleura. The patient is going to have the pleural plaques. Okay, pleural plaques, it's a pleural cancer. This patient are, is also at a risk of, is also the most common cancer is going to be bronchogenic carcinoma. Bronchogenic carcinoma. This patient can have bronchogenic carcinoma, that's the most common thing. But the most specific cancer, and this cancer is going to be only seen with asbestosis, that is mesothelioma, cancer of the pleura. Okay, so interstitial lung disease. The point which I want you to know is this asbestosis is going to especially affect lower lobes of the lung. Okay, lower lobes of the lung are going to be affected. What else is going to be seen on the histology? If you do the histology, what you see is ferruginous bodies. Ferruginous bodies is going to be seen as well as plaques are going to be seen, asbestos bodies, uh, which are also called as ferruginous bodies, asbestos bodies, which are in the dumbbell shape, these asbestos bodies are going to be seen or ferruginous bodies are going to be seen on the histology. At the end of the day, the important point which I want you to know is, in restrictive lung diseases, the main problem, okay, the main problem is with inspiration, lungs are not expanding properly. Okay, there is pulmonary fibrosis. As there is pulmonary fibrosis, what happens? The diffusion of gases, okay, in restrictive lung diseases, what happened to the DLCO study? The DLCO study is going to be decreased. Okay, the DLCO study is going to be decreased because there is restriction. Okay, uh, pulmonary fibrosis is happening. So, proper gases exchange is not going to occur. So, the diffusion of gases within the alveoli are going to be decreased. So, DLCO study is going to be decreased in restrictive lung diseases, mainly interstitial lung diseases. In interstitial lung diseases, the DLCO study is going to go down. What about the FEC and FEV1? FEV1 and FEC both are going to be reduced. As they are reducing in a proper proportion, FEV1 by FEC ratio is going to be normal. And what are the causes of restrictive lung diseases? The causes I have given you, the most common cause is idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. We don't know what is the reason. Okay, pulmonary lungs are getting fibrotic. And systemic disorders like scleroderma, rheumatoid arthritis, Wegener's granulomatosis, uh, sarcoidosis, good pasture syndrome are the systemic disorders which can lead to idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Or, sorry, not idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, restrictive lung diseases. Now, pneumoconiosis like coal worker pneumoconiosis, silicosis, asbestosis, they can lead. Okay. And the drugs and hypersensitivity pneumonitis can also lead to restrictive lung diseases. So, which restrictive lung diseases increase the risk of mycobacterium TB? Silicosis. Which restrictive lung disease is going to show the defect in the phagolysosomal fusion? Silicosis. Which restrictive lung diseases are going to show the ferruginous bodies or asbestosis bodies? It is asbestosis. Which restrictive lung diseases are going to affect upper lobes of the lung? It is silicosis as well as coal workers pneumoconiosis. Which is going to affect the lower lobes of the lung? Asbestosis, ferruginous bodies, asbestosis, cancer of the pleura, that is a mesothelioma, asbestosis. With this, the topic of restrictive lung disease is completed. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.